everyone, this is Rosie, and today we're going to be making a small ID card holder with scalloped edges using the Cricut Maker. So, let's get started. I have some completed card holders right here. Now, these card holders have been cut out with an SVG file using the Cricut Maker. If you would like to make one of these, I do have a link to the SVG file in the description below the video, but please note that that file has only been tested on the Cricut Maker. So this is the exterior of the card holder that we're looking at here. It's made with a soft vinyl and it does have scalloped edges. On the inside, you're going to see that there are two windows for holding some cards. And right here on the back side of the exterior, I've placed a layer of heat transfer vinyl. And the card holder just closes with a cam snap. On this one, I just have two cards placed in here. And then I thought that this would be a really cute idea for presenting a gift card to someone. So on this side, I've just simply slipped in a little card that says happy birthday. And over here on this side is the gift card. I have the SVG file loaded onto the Cricut Design Space Canvas. Now I'm not going to go over any details about how to upload files. There are plenty of videos that you can watch to learn how to do that if you need to do so. I just want to show you the pieces that you will have within your SVG file. The green one over here is for your exterior vinyl. The pink one next to it is for your interior vinyl. The blue piece over here is for your clear vinyl and the orange piece is for your heat transfer vinyl. Now let's go on to talk about the materials needed to make the project. Here are the pieces that I'll be using to make the card holder. Both the exterior and the interior pieces are a very soft, pliable vinyl that has a fabric backing on them. Then I have a piece of clear vinyl here, which is 16 gauge, and that will be for the ID windows and then I also have a piece of heat transfer vinyl here. Now I've pre-cut each one of these pieces to be five and a half inches wide by seven and a half inches high. And I want to just quickly go over how I put these pieces on my mat. I did use the strong grip mat for this project and I simply took my vinyl, just lined it up, and then I'm taking a very heavy roller. This is a stainless steel roller here and I brayered it down really well because I just want to make sure that as this is cutting out, the vinyl is not going to shift. And if you take a look here, you can see it's holding it down pretty well. If you're worried about it shifting at all, you can put a piece of painter's tape all around the edges, but I did not find that that was necessary at all. Now I do want to say here that you probably want to take a piece of your vinyl first a small piece and do a little test cut. Now for cutting, I use the setting of non-adhesive 16 gauge vinyl at the default pressure. And that worked well for both my exterior, my interior, and my clear vinyl. But again, you'll want to do a little test cut with maybe a one or a two inch square to see what settings are going to work for you. But I found that using either the 16 gauge vinyl or 20 gauge vinyl settings worked just fine. Then for the heat transfer vinyl, I just use the setting for everyday heat transfer vinyl. In addition to the pieces that we've already gone over, you're going to need a set of cam snaps, your thread, and some 1 8 inch double sided adhesive tape. After you've run all of your pieces through the maker, you're going to have your exterior piece here with all the scallops cut out. You'll have your interior vinyl piece with the two ID windows cut out, and it's also going to cut out the holes right here, which will be for your cam snap placement. Then you're going to have your clear vinyl, which is going to cut out as one piece. It's just going to have an opening right here in the center that's going to match up with this opening right here. And then you'll have your HTV vinyl, and I've already weeded out the excess vinyl. In this step, we need to apply the heat transfer vinyl to the wrong side of the exterior. And I do have my exterior piece here with the wrong side already facing up. And when you apply your heat transfer vinyl, you want to use the manufacturer's instructions for the brand that you're using. I'm going to take it and 
place it onto the wrong side of the exterior, making sure that we have even spacing all the way around. And once you have it in place, you can go ahead and heat set it. And I'm going to do mine off camera. I have my heat transfer vinyl set into place, and now I'm just going to remove the plastic film on top. And then we can set that aside for a minute. Next, you need your interior vinyl piece plus the clear vinyl for the ID window. Now, we want to take some double-sided adhesive tape, and then again, I'm using 1 8 inch wide adhesive tape, and we want to place it around the opening in the center here, and then we want to also place some tape onto the four sides. So I'll start by placing my double-sided tape on each side of that opening, and you want to get it right up to the edge, just like this. And then we're going to place a piece of tape around each of the four sides. And again, just go right up to the edge with that tape. And now that I have the tape on there, it's a little bit easier to see the shape of the vinyl. So first, we're going to take the release paper off of the tape that's surrounding the center. And now we want to place the vinyl on the wrong side of the interior piece. And we're going to line this opening up with the opening in the center of the interior. So you're going to place it on there, line the opening edges up the best you can, and then secure it down. And then you just want to check and make sure that the vinyl, the clear vinyl, is not peeking through on the front. And now we're going to take the release paper off of the four sides and adhere that down onto the interior. When you do this, you want to lay everything flat to make sure that you're not distorting the shape of the interior vinyl. So I like to just do one side at a time. And now that we have that in place, we're going to sew all around the opening of this middle section here. I'm sewing on a Tech Sew 4800 Pro, and I'm using a stitch length of 4.0. We'll be stitching approximately 1 8 of an inch away from the edge of the opening. Now, this is an industrial cylinder arm sewing machine, but by no means do you need to be using an industrial sewing machine for this project. It should work well for you on a domestic. You can always test out the layers that you're using to see how your machine will sew through it. Also, if you're using a domestic sewing machine, you probably want to use a Teflon foot. Now we're just going to take it slow, and you definitely want to go slow around your curves here. Trying to get it as neat looking as you can. Mine are not always perfect, so just do the best you can.
when you get back to your starting point you just want to sew a few stitches over your original stitches and then back stitch. Now we're ready to install the cam snaps. Now we already have the placement holes here for the cam snaps, but we do need to punch through the clear vinyl. You can do this either with an awl or you can use a hole punch tool, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to line it up with the hole that's already there and punch it out. The holes are punched, so now we can install the cam snaps. This side of the snap here gets installed on the wrong side of the interior. And then on the opposite side, you'll put either a male or female piece. Doesn't matter which one. And then you'll take a tool for setting your cam snap and press everything in place. And then you'll go ahead and install the cam snap on the opposite side in exactly the same way. So this piece goes on the wrong side. And now I have the male piece set in here and press it in place. Now that the snaps are installed, we'll turn this over so that the wrong side is facing up. And once again, we're going to place some double-sided adhesive tape around the four sides. Then we can go ahead and remove the release paper from each side here. Then you'll take your exterior piece and you're going to place it on top of the wrong side of the interior and you want to make sure that all those scalloped edges are all nicely lined up as you do this. So go ahead and secure it all the way around. If you need to lift it back up and make some adjustments, that's fine too. Now that we have the exterior and interior adhered together with the tape, we're going to sew all the way around one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the scallop. And right here is the edge of the scallop. So we'll be sewing one eighth of an inch away from these points. And if you want, you can go ahead and also put in a few wonder clips just to hold everything in place a little better for you. I'm ready to sew around the sides and this time I'll be using a stitch length of 5.0. When you're back to the beginning, just stitch over a few of your original stitches and then back stitch. And there you go, you're all done. This really is a cute, fast, and fun project to make. And remember that there is a link to the SVG file in the description below the video. I would love to see you over at my Facebook group, which is Rosie and David Patterns, where you can post pictures of the ones that you've made. I want to thank everybody who has supported me by liking my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you're not already a channel subscriber, I really would love to have you as one. So please like and subscribe.